Hello and welcome back to Dundee Road. I'm now going to start putting some lights into my coaches. I've got a couple of Hornby coaches here which I'm going to start putting some LED lights in. I've got several cold white diffused LEDs which I'm going to put in to give a general lighting into the coaches. I don't want them to be too bright but I do want them to have a certain amount of light in them all the time. To do this I'm going to take the power straight from the rails so my left and right rail are going to supply the AC power. So to start with I'm going to build a test circuit um, on the breadboard so I'm going to set all my LEDs the, the right way around make sure that they all work and make sure that the brightness is what I want it to be. So to do this I first of all add all my LEDs in in the, the right order the right way around for the, the circuit in a DC layout and I'll connect them up to a battery pack which is about 3.3 .3 volts and I'm using two double A's in a, a, a battery holder from a Poundland um, set of lights which I've, I've already taken apart and as you can see I'm just connecting the red wire up to the positive and the black wire to the negative and this is going to give me my baseline of how bright these LEDs are on 3 volts which is what they're designed to run on. They're not designed to run in any higher so when it comes to actually connecting to the DCC I'm going to have to put in a resistor to bring it back down to this brightness and so that I don't blow the LEDs. The DCC is an AC current as well so I won't actually have to be careful what way round they are because the, the current's always going to be alternating but I do want to have the, the brightness to be about this, this bright. It looks very bright because I've got all four LEDs right together so it's a very very bright pulse. So that's, I've just disconnected the battery pack and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the resistor that I've chosen into the circuit and connect it up to my DCC controller. This is going to test that I've got all the LEDs working and make sure that they're not going to blow when it actually comes to them being um, in in the, the proper circuit and all connected up and soldered up. Don't want to solder up and find that the circuit doesn't work. Trying to find out where it's gone wrong when it's all connected up is, is a bit of a pain. So here I'm just connecting up to the second the secondary power supply. The top the top power supply rail there, that, that is my 16 volts AC coming from my Hornby controller. So I'm just connecting in the resistor here. While using the breadboard, it's, it's quite difficult to, to stick the, the braided wire. Um, the, the strands just seem to, to pull out. So that's why I'm having a bit of difficulty here. Soon we'll have some light again from the, the DCC. I'm a bit concerned about getting some ripple from the, the AC current um, because it's it's not constantly on. Um, when it was on the battery, it's a direct current. It's your, your positive and minus are always positive and minus, whereas the DC, it's, it's alternating. So here we go. We should have some light any second. There we are. So now we've got the, the, the lights all on. They're about the same brightness, maybe a little bit dimmer than they were before. And that's that's about right. So now we can start building the actual circuit that's going to go into my coaches. So let's start taking this coach apart. So these Hornby coaches, the, the roof comes off and that gives us access to everything inside. 
just being gentle here to make sure that I, they don't snap anything. These coaches also have the benefit that the, the seats all come out as, as one and that's going to give me a place to hide all the wiring. Um, I'm actually going to run all of the wires underneath the seating. Just removing the wheels to make it easier um, as I'll need to drill some holes. And then I'll quickly lay out everything in the rough order that it's going to sit in the carriage once it's fully built. Um, so I make sure that when it's all back together that the lights are going to be roughly in the in the right place. I am expecting to get a little bit of a pinpoint above where the lights are. So it's important that I, I put the pinpoint as close to where the real lights would be in each carriage. So I'm, I'm probably happy with them, them sitting there. That should, that should be about right. Now I need to drill some holes in the base ready to take the wires. I'm going to use these little connectors from eBay. Um, they were they were quite cheap. Um, they are four pin however I'm only going to use two out of the four. I found while soldering trying to solder the four connections on um, was just a little bit too difficult. So I'm, I'm using um, black and red as one connection and yellow and green as another connection so that's my, my AC which runs through. So on one end of my car I'm going to have a socket and on the other end it's going to be a plug. The trailing wire is going to go from car to car. So I, I think I will be putting some holes in either end to receive these. I'm just double checking my positioning as I want to make sure that when it comes out, out of the locomotive into the car it's just going to be a, a straight loop through with little stretching of cables. So now I need to drill my holes. I planned where I'm going to put them, so now I'm going to get my drill. I go quite slowly with this, I let the drill, the weight of the drill actually do all the work. Nice and slowly without any cracking or any damage to the rest of the vehicle. Um, I only want one hole on either end. Um, I don't want to have to be patching up lots of, lots of plastic holes. I'm using a fairly small drill bit as well. Um, and this is just to, to allow enough space for the wires to go through um, but not necessarily the, the plugs themselves I want them to kind of be captive on the outside um, I'm going to glue them in so it doesn't, it doesn't actually matter that they're slightly smaller than the holes Now we need to cut each of the wires to the right length I want them to be a little bit longer than the actual length of the card, just so I've got enough for stripping and uh, bending around and making sure that I actually have enough to do the job I'm, I'm setting out to do. To save space and cost of the wiring, I'm using some of this enameled wire. It's a bit more tricky to use as you have to burn off the enamel coating um, on the copper wire before you can actually use it to connect to anything. Uh, but it's very thin, very lightweight, and it's almost invisible when you use it in certain places. So that's why I've chosen to use it here. Um, I wanted to have my, my black wire, which would be my negative on DC, and then my red wire, which I'm using the enamel wire for. So here I am, I'm burning off the enamel. Just need some solder and quite a bit of heat and it, it burns off quite easily. So here we go, we're burning off more, more of the enameled wire. 
don't need an awful lot to be burnt off of the end and you see it bubbling and and the smoke there which is just coming off um, obviously I'm not breathing in any of the, the fumes that are coming from this it, it's going, it is going up to the camera but it's not coming up to me So as you can see, the end of the wire is now silver rather than being the, the copper colour, which means that I've, I've got the, the solder on there. So now I'm putting the fly lead into the socket so I know which way around it is. So I can connect my, my red side or what would be the red side from the, the connector, turning the, the the two connections, as they're so small, it, it's just much easier to, to use both. Um, so in this case, the red and the black will, will be going to the enameled wire and the green and the yellow will be going to the black wire. And at the other end, I will connect the corresponding colors to the, the next fly lead. And I'll be using the black from my LED light string and the red of the LED light string going from the enameled wire and the black going from the, the black. So as you can see I'm having a bit of difficulty getting the actual solder to stick as the connections are tiny. Um, next time when I'm, I'm looking for these I'll try and get a, a two pin and possibly a bigger uh, pin set um, to actually to do this it will just be so much easier than the, the four small pins. The idea was that I was going to have the a common negative and then use the red, the green and the yellow um, as DCC controllable parts. Now that I've got all the wires connected up to the little socket I will feed them through and run them underneath where the seating is going to be. And you can see the enameled wire is very thin and on camera it's very difficult to see. That is what I'm, why I wanted to use the enameled wire because it is very difficult to see and it's very thin. So if it does go into the wrong place and is in front of windows or is, is visible somewhere on, on buildings when I use them later on in the layout, I'll, I'll be able to hide them and they won't stand out as much or they'll just look like something metal um, rather than thick plastic wire dangling. So I'm holding this to the base with some super glue um, and that should be strong enough to keep the connection. Now that that's held in place it's time to start looking at putting the seats back in. So as you can see I'm putting the seats over the wires, I've got them the wrong way around, I'll turn them around in a second. So as you can see the wires do fit quite neatly underneath the seating. So there's no actual wires poked down the sides and they're, they're very very thin. Um, even though the black one is, is a plastic coated wire it's still thin enough to go underneath. If I had two, two plastic coated wires, I may have had more difficulty getting this to fit in. So just make sure that all the, all the seating is back in place properly and clipped in place. So now I have my black wire and my enameled wire which I will connect up to the, the plug end. So again, just like the socket, it comes underneath through the hole that we made earlier. And I split, split the wires into black red, which will connect the enameled wire and red side of my LEDs, and yellow green which will connect to the black wire and the black side of my LEDs. As I said, I if I do this again, 
um, I'll order just the, the two pin and possibly a, a, a larger pin set for the, the sockets um, which should allow me to be able to, to add more wires. I may do the same on the other side and add the DCC connections in that I was planning to so that will give me functions off of the single chip in, in one loco. Um, these car carriages will be used on multiple um, engines so I'm making all my wiring universal so that no matter if I plug an HST into this into the front they're going to run and they're going to light up or if I plug the 225 in they're going to run and light up So as you can see, I'm adding in my resistor now. This is the resistor that we tested earlier on um, with the wiring. So because I'm going to apply quite a bit of solder here, I haven't stripped the enamel wire. I'm doing that while I'm soldering. I will double check continuity as soon as I've got some LEDs on here. Um, but as you can see, I'm holding the, the enameled wire and the, the solder on it for quite a bit of time just to make sure that I do burn through the coating and that I do have a connection. I'm using lead-based solder um, as it flows much better. Um, I found it locally in uh, the range um, and the, the solder that I've bought has been been from eBay. Um, so there, there's, it's about now um, and it just seems to flow so much better than the, the lead-free solder which I have used and used for so long and always been disappointed by how, how it works. Um, I have only just started using the lead-based solder and it is, it's like night and day. You wouldn't believe how much of a difference um, that it is. Saying that, I'm not breathing in any of the fumes which are, are coming off of it. Um, they are all going the other side of, of the screen um, and I'm making sure that I'm not in harm's way if there is any danger there. It's all about risk and reward really. So now I'm just putting together the green and the yellow making sure that they're all together and now I am snipping the LED negative connection although the DCC system is using um, AC current um, I have kept all the wiring so that one side is definitely positive and the other side is negative I may put a bridge rectifier in to make sure that they are positive and negative um, in future. Again, that comes down to if I actually put in some DCC functionality where that I would need to know which way that the locomotive is, is going. Um, I do plan to have cab lights and uh, direction lights in both ends. At the moment I'm going to use different chips, one on either end, um, but in future I would like to have the functions on the chips um, do all the lighting for me. Um, planning that at this stage is, is pretty much just planning. So here you can see I'm making sure that I've got continuity from one end to the other. I've got a socket in and I'm making sure that the resistance um, is greater than zero. So if the resistance was zero you would see that the one at the far left. So they all check out okay. So now I'm ready to start putting together my LEDs.
So I'll just get a, a piece of red wire, the same length as my black. This one could be a bit shorter. Um, if if I was trying to save wire, I would have I would have made it slightly slightly shorter. Um, as there's a resistor in here, so the resistor makes the red lead slightly longer. And again, I'm just twisting the resistor leg around, trying not to stress the resistor. As you can see, it pops off quite easily, so I'll just tin the lead and tin that lead and then just connect them together. So there we go, that's it now, so I can just cut off the, the lead there. If I wanted to change the LE, the resistor at any point, I can just snip it out of that. Um, I've left enough wire on both both ends of, of that to, to be able just to, to remove the resistor. Um, and then if the LEDs are too bright or not bright enough, um, I, I can't see them not being bright enough. Um, but I may use a, a slightly larger resistor to bring down the the overall brightness. So as you can see, I've got enough red and black wire to run the entire length. And I'm going to use my helping hands as much as I can to hold the wire. These helping hands are brilliant for, for stuff like this where you've got many things going on. I've got several layers of, of wiring going on here. So the idea I'm going to try is to splice into the black and red wire. So just strip enough of the black and red insulation to get a solder connection rather than cutting lots of individual pieces of wire I want to be able to just have one piece of wire which has multiple connections on it which is much straighter um, and is much easier to handle because there's no breaks and um, anywhere where there's a break it could be a failure point going forward um, and as these carriages are going to shake and, and move about quite a bit, I'd rather have a solid wire um, and then just be able to resolder the connection of the, the LED rather than having to fig having to melt both wires off and then melt the LED off and then melt them all back together again just just to check if there's if there's a fault. Also by keeping it as a single wire, if the middle LED was to fail, I can quite quickly see it's the middle LED that's gone rather than it being multiple LEDs that have gone out. So now we're going to connect all the LEDs up. So as you can see I am tinning the sections which I have stripped mid in midpoints through the wire. Um, this means that the actual core of the wire remains intact and if any of the LEDs come off or crack out of their solder then I can just touch it back up. Um, the black one I have gone through quite a bit too far uh, when I was stripping so I will need to add an extra bit back onto the end. So making sure that I keep each of the LEDs in contact with heat as least time as possible. Again, just to try and make sure that the LEDs last a long time. These LEDs are just from eBay, so they are just the cheap ones, um, but they're perfectly good for this, for this job. Um, I think I bought a hundred for about five pounds um, on eBay. Um, I will list the parts below. Um, 
if anybody would like to, to attempt to do a similar method of of lighting their coaches. It is fairly simple. It just is quite time consuming. Um, I have shown the full process here um, from start to finish, which is why the video is, is so long. Um, so it, it is fairly easy to do. Um, as you can see, I'm just doing one side of all the LEDs at the moment. Um, this is why we tested them before to make sure that they were all laid out in the right the right direction um, so they are almost guaranteed to work as soon as um, I apply power as soon as I apply this the 16 volts um, to the end of the carriage these should light up um, so now we'll do the the negative connection or the 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 black side um, as it is um, AC that we're dealing with and as you can see the wire is a bit shorter because when I was using the, the stripper it, it went right through the cable rather than just the, the small section so I just add a little bit of solder to each of the, the sections that we have here as you can see, it's quite smoky. I'm, I'm probably catching some of the, the the plastic coating on the on the wire as well. I'm trying to get my fingers into a good angle so that I'm not going to burn myself. I'm not perfect with a, a soldering iron whatsoever. Um, I have learned by by trial and error and burning myself several times in the process. Um, I am informed that even the best of soldering aficionados would actually burn themselves from time to time. You do get used to used to the heat. I found while using the enameled wire more so the heat does travel along the copper quite well. See, I'm using my stripper tool again. This is invaluable for doing stuff like this. It just allows me to strip the tiniest amounts without damaging the wire below. So there we go. We're almost done this, this carriage worth of lights. So as you can see, it hasn't taken all that long to, to actually connect up all the LEDs. The, the time has all been in the, the planning, the stripping down and making sure that I have the, the correct wires in the correct place. It's always good to make sure that you've got enough solder to hold things together. I'll go to the end one and then I'll come back to that troublesome middle one. Add a bit more solder. LEDs were together. Now that they're all apart and they're they're in the positions that they should be in the carriage, I am expecting to get a pin of pinpoint of light, um, but then the rest will be a general glow. So now we've got it all working, we can start tidying up all the sharp edges and wires. I'm leaving enough so that if I do have to come back and make any change, I can just reflow the solder, remove a faulty LED or change the LED. These are cold white LEDs, um, which are more modern and would, and would suit a more modern livery. 
Um, so I may at some point change some for some warm white LEDs um, and that, that might look more like incandescent bulbs. Um, but as I'm modelling a modern era, um, then I will I'll be using these these cold white, um, which should fit my my liveries and my style. So now we need to get it into the top of the roof, and to do this, I'm going to use super glue, which can take a bit of time to to dry. So I'm making sure that I've placed the lights roughly where they need to go. Um, as you can see in this car, I'm not doing the toilets and, and front vestibule or the back vestibule, but I'm just making sure that all the seating area is, is well lit. There should still be light in each of the other vestibules, but not as much, um, which is, is true to the prototypical. The vestibules tend not to be as brightly lit um, as the rest of the, as the carriage is. So the super glue I'm using, although it does dry instantly on fingers, it doesn't dry instantly on plastic. So it does take a bit of time. I had thought about using sticky tape and other, other things, but I thought that the super glue would be the, the best thing to do here. Um, I'm not putting lots on so I'm just using enough to hold it and the reason I'm, I'm not slathering it, covering it is one, that the, the glue would just take forever to dry the more you put on, the more the longer it takes but if I do need to take these out for any reason the less glue that's there the, the less resistance I'm going to have and the less damage I'm going to do when I'm having to try and remove it the last thing I want to do is to, to damage the car. I want to make these look good, but I don't want to cause any damage. So I'm just putting a couple of dots of glue along along the top and holding it enough enough time just for it to set enough to hold itself. It won't be completely set, not for a while, but. Try and doing this this as quick as possible so that I can show you everything on the video. So as you can see, I'm just putting the tiniest of dots, not much at all. I've also found that the super glue makes the the acrylic type plastic, the clear plastic, go a bit cloudy. So if it goes in the wrong place, it just it just looks like something's happened to the glass that it really needs replaced. Um, I have made that mistake with one of the other carriages where there's been too much glue used. I'm just making sure that where the wires are, they're not in front of any of the windows. The, the benefit of this carriage is that the windows are all in the top. So I can see them all. I can see quite clearly where the wires are and make sure that they're not in, they're not going to cause me any problems. While I'm waiting for the glue to dry, if you've got any comments, please let me know. Um, I'm doing this channel for a bit of fun and I would like comments and if anybody wants wants to contribute anything to my layout then please please do. So that's that's it now, it's it's dry enough for us to start putting the carriage back together. So let's start putting the carriage back together. So now we just need to be careful of the, all the wires. Make sure that all the, the wires that need to be inside remain inside. As you can see, the, the black wire 
is giving me a bit of problems, so I will give it a bit of persuasion with my screwdriver and try and get that to, to stay in the right place and squeeze it down. So as you can see, coming out of the bottom, we've got our little connector, uh, which will go in between the carriages. And on the other end, there's a socket which takes this connector. I've currently got a test connector fitted so that I can test the carriage. And that's how I've been able to light it up and, and show you everything working. It is a bit fiddly putting it back together. It's a bit fiddly putting it back together without any extra wires in it. So um, just slow and gentle with, with these. Um, these cars are quite old now. So I am just slowly persuading it to, to get back together. So once I've got one end, it's much easier to get the other. And again, that, that black wire is still causing problems. I've tried to keep the wiring inside as short as possible to try and prevent this from happening. But inevitably you will need some extra so that you can take the top off, clean the inside and maintain the LEDs. Um, although LEDs do last a fair amount of time, they're not, they, they're not guaranteed to last forever or the length of time that you want to hold, have your carriages for. Um, I think these carriages are about 20 years old so any any type of bulb won't last that long so you do have to have some space so I'll try putting the bogies back on I think these are the wrong bogies so we'll get the the correct bogey those are from the Lima cars which I need to do in a separate They're slightly diff difficult to take apart so now that's the bogey and as you can see it clears the wires and allows the bogey still to turn there's enough space for the, the wires and I can poke the wires back in. So now we'll, we'll do the other side. And that's our car now fully, fully back together and fully lit. So now we've tested the car, can now put them back together. Um, this, this layout and this design allows me to be able to connect cars one way around only, but it does mean that I can connect multiple cars in any order as long as their socket connector, socket connector. Um, this was quite important to me so that I could be able to change the layout and the configuration um, to match the, the current configurations or future configurations of the HST and the, the 225. Let's have a look at that now on the layout. So as you can see, the two carriages that I've done are fully lit and they're connected to the 225. At the moment the 225 is still a work in progress so it's not looking its best but the connectors are working and it's all being fed through. I've done another car which is for an HST 
um, which is one of Hornby's short cars. It doesn't look right on the layout. It's the one that I'm using to get the, the livery from on the other HST. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching.